On the geopolitical stage right now, Biden is looking around for the Yemeni civil war emergency exit. I thought I'd take a little time to describe how America got to where we are with Yemen and our efforts to get out of it. Selfish to say, our relationship status is a bit beyond it's complicated. So gather around everyone because it's story time. Here's an incredibly Sparknotes version of how America got tangled up in Yemen and how we're trying to untangle ourselves. Our story begins on September 14, 2001 when Congress passed the authorization for use of military force. It was three days after 9-11 and America was ready to wail on the world. This act allowed America to fight any group or individual with six degrees of separation to 9-11. And it didn't take long for America to cash this blank check. In 2002, America packed its bags and headed over to Yemen for the purposes of training and equipping the government in a fight against Al Qaeda fighters. The next year, America decided, you know what, if you want something done, do it yourself. And we started a shadow war fighting against Al Qaeda in the background of Yemen. Just ignore us. We don't want to get involved in your politics. We're just here fighting international terrorist groups in the background. I promise we'll keep it down. No, I don't want to seem dismissive of Al Qaeda's power in Yemen because they have a strong presence in Yemen's rural regions. Sending American forces to fight Al Qaeda in Yemen under the AUMF wouldn't have been legally controversial. Ethically, maybe, but I'll leave that to the comments section to decide. Al Qaeda was the group that did 9-11 and they're here. America passed the AUMF specifically so we could fight Al Qaeda internationally. So this anti-Al Qaeda shadow war just kind of played out in the background of Yemeni politics for the next 10 years. Then 2012 happened and in the midst of the Arab Spring, Saudi Arabia decided to tell the Iranian backed Yemeni leader, Shia later. They replaced that leader with one more to their liking. Now with this new Saudi backed government, America slid into Yemen's DMs and started cooperating directly with that new government in the fight against terrorism. <gasps> uh oh, America's shadow war was starting to get a little political. Now if a civil war were to break out in Yemen, I think we'd have some opinions. Two years later in 2014, that guy Saudi Arabia kicked out came back with a vengeance. Iranian backed Houthi rebels seized Yemen's capital city and the civil war was on. This is where things get strange because America's position in Yemen suddenly fractured in two. So first you have this anti-terrorist AUMF hand that we've been talking about up to this point. Now this is America fighting in Yemen with the cooperation of the Yemeni government against Al Qaeda. And second, you have this other new American hand that gets a lot more debate today. This hand is the one selling weapons to Saudi Arabia to use in this new Yemeni civil war. This hand isn't going to be sending any troops to fight in Yemen. Need to be able to tell the public we're steering clear of getting mired in another Middle Eastern conflict. Never shall these two hands meet. Now these separate stances certainly seem contradictory, but they're just contradictory adjacent. The idea was, don't mind us, we're just in the background fighting terrorists. Whoever wins the war will give them a polite golf clap and keep doing what we do. We're here to observe, not interfere. Now one immediate problem quickly emerged is the enemy of the enemy my friend. The use of the AUMF in Yemen was especially bizarre in this new context because Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula was fighting alongside the US Saudi coalition against the Houthi rebels. Now even for Middle Eastern policy that's a bit muddled. Basically the coalition's relationship with Al Qaeda is kinda like Republican senators relationship with QAnon. You're on the same side, ish, but if Democrats didn't exist, they'd certainly try to kill you. Now, in this case, Shia Iran was the uniting enemy. So it's 2015, and the Iranian backed Houthis just seized the Yemeni capital. Days later, the world's recognized Yemeni government was forced to flee to Saudi Arabia. In response, Saudi Arabia formed a coalition to restore Yemeni's internationally recognized government to power. 
The plan was to provide air support for government forces, local militias, and anyone who would pick up a gun under the right flag. Consensus was this was going to be a quick in and out civil war. Drop some bombs, Yemeni soldiers take over the cities, then get the government back. Be back for dinner. Bada bing bada boom. America, well, we were super gung ho with this idea. Former Obama Deputy Secretary of State and current Biden Secretary of State Anthony Blinken declared, Saudi Arabia is sending a strong message to the Houthis and their allies. And as a part of that effort, we have expedited weapons deliveries and we will increase our intelligence sharing. Of course, America was simply going to supply weapons and intelligence in this case because this was one civil war we were not going to be directly a part of. We're keeping our hands clean. Except for our anti-Al Qaeda operations that were now in cooperation with an exiled government. Now, While this US backed Saudi Arabian bombing campaign was ramping up, this AUMF handover in the corner was moving around as well. The AUMF mandating Yemen was expanded and split into two categories. You first had coordinated actions with this newly exiled Yemeni government against Al Qaeda, you know, the program we're used to at this point, and then you had this other new contingent. In April 2016, the United States deployed a small team of forces to advise and assist Saudi led troops to retake territory from Al Qaeda. This new set of American troops combined with a separate series of American airstrikes, specifically 35 in 2016, set the tone for a separate, escalated, America-only background war. Now pivoting back to the Saudi Arabian air war, this early period of time was just insanity. At one point, Al Qaeda just sort of seized a major city and ran it for a year before turning it over to Saudi backed forces. Now, unfortunately, that chaos did not lead to a definitive result. A stalemate emerged with Iranian backed Houthi forces maintaining control in the northwest region. So, what do you do when you find yourself in a stalemate? Make life incredibly difficult for everyone involved. Now, unfortunately for Yemen, based on geography, if Saudi Arabia doesn't want you to get something, you're probably not going to get it. A coalitional naval blockade was set up to prevent sea trade, Saudi Arabia blocked a land trade, and if that wasn't enough, Obama tried to give this rebellion the old triple tap by imposing UN sanctions. Nothing was getting in or out. Now, this is where human rights issues really start kicking in, because the Saudis blockaded the country denying food and medicine to most of the population. More important to Obama, running an exclusively air war kills a lot more civilians than boots on the ground. In this final year of his term, Obama halted some of the arms sales to Saudi Arabia because the bombing campaign was killing an unacceptable number of civilians. Now, of course, elephant in the room, Obama's replacement was somehow even more gung ho pro Saudi Arabia than he was. First thing Trump did was update the AUMF mission in Yemen again. Now America was going to continue to work with Yemen against terrorism, you know, business as usual. We were conducting airstrikes and supporting the UAE and Yemen led operations, little out there but still could be justified under fighting Al Qaeda, and very importantly we were now providing non combat support to Yemen against the Houthi insurgency. Ding ding ding, we hit it, America's AUMF hand just joined one side of the Yemeni civil war. Now, This move was very legally questionable at the time because we were trying to connect the Houthi insurgency fighting against Al Qaeda with 9-11. Fortunately for everyone in the room, no one raised their hand and asked a follow up question. It's situations like these where you see America circling the drain of Whoops, we armed Al Qaeda. What? They seemed cool when they were fighting the Houthis. And during this early period in Trump's presidency, we also saw America quadruple the number of airstrikes we, not Saudi Arabia, were separately launching in Yemen under the justification of this AUMF hand. 
Now unfortunately the AUMF tracking spreadsheet stopped in 2017, so from this point onward it's mostly classified materials. My security clearance is Google. To go back to the other hand, during this early Trump period not much progress was being made on the Saudi Arabian air war front, and the humanitarian situation was getting a lot worse fast. A combination of blockading some food and aid and bombing civilian infrastructure led Yemen to be considered the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. Now, Despite those negatives, it was a great time to be a Saudi Arabian arms buyer. If you say Iranian backed three times into a mirror, John Bolton tries to give you a democracy. Now, planes and bombs were flowing in from America, but then something happened that really consolidated opinions against the war in Yemen. In October 2018, Saudi Arabia murdered a Washington Post journalist. At this point, Congress looked at their hands and said, wait, are we the baddies? I mean, I kind of knew the famine blockade wasn't great, but this seals the deal. America immediately stopped refueling Saudi bombers, and Congress began drafting a bill to demand America get out of Yemen. In 2019, Congress actually took the historic vote and United States involvement in Yemen. The specific goal here was to direct the removal of United States armed forces from hostilities in the Republic of Yemen that had not been authorized by Congress. So ok, this is about armed forces in Yemen and not sales of arms. I can roll with that. Are we pulling the AUMF hand out of Yemen? No, they are exempt. Ok, so well, I think that's all the American forces that are in Yemen. Now this is why I spent so much time emphasizing the two separate hands earlier on in this episode. During this whole winding down debate that's ongoing, you get a lot of empty but politically important sounding talking points. We're pulling all of the troops out of Yemen, except for the troops that are in Yemen. This bill was politically significant but legally meaningless. It called for the United States to remove all troops involved in combat operations in Yemen with the exemption of AUMF forces, but the position of both Obama and the Trump administrations was that the United States was not militarily involved in the conflict in Yemen. This is the Saudi Arabia support hand saying, yeah, we're just going to mind our own business with this one. AUMF hand? We trust you to handle yourselves. Shake on it. It's like ending a toxic relationship while continuing to live with the person and romance them. We're still in Yemen, we just don't like labels. Now, despite all those caveats, that bill was still vetoed by the Trump administration. And similarly, in the post Khashoggi era, Congress successfully voted to pass several bills blocking new arms sales to Saudi Arabia, but those efforts were also vetoed by the Trump administration. So this brings us to Biden and his announcement that he is now going to end his support for the war in Yemen. What does that mean? Well, first and foremost, the two hands will continue to not touch and AUMF operations will continue unimpeded in Yemen. American troops, well, they're staying in country. Despite that facet of American policy in Yemen remaining untouched, Biden has done some clipping of the other hand's fingernails. Instead of vetoing new limits on Saudi arms sales, Biden has announced to an end to relevant United States armed sales. He's definitely cruising down the middle of the road with this policy. We're not ending arms sales, but some yet to be described relevant arms sales will be terminated. He also said he was pausing some of the billions of dollars in arms sales with Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia's main partner in its Yemeni offensive. And lastly, in the lowest of low hanging fruit category, Biden called for a ceasefire, an opening of humanitarian channels to allow more delivery of aid, and a return to long stalled peace talks. Hey, the last guy didn't pick it. So instead of a blank check and protection from congressional intervention, Saudi Arabia now has to deal with an administration that's going to subtly nudge them and suggest that maybe bomb them less and stop blockading their food and aid. So that's how we got to where we currently are in Yemen. 
I hope this video clarified America's many, many different positions in that country and what Biden is trying to change. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.